Look at that. A beautiful British pint. There you go, Prof. The usual. Cheers. Oh, is that the time? I gotta go. Stand clear, Prof. <laughs> For the ladies, good evening, look at you, eh? God bless you, doesn't get any better than this, eh? Sunday night drinkers, God fucking bless you. <laughs> you don't give a shit about your jobs, God bless you all. <laughs> Welcome, beautiful people, eh? Geezer here, what's your name, pal? Mark! Beautiful British name. <laughs> what do you do for a living, Mark? Tell me. I run IT consultancy. You run an IT consultancy? <laughs> <laughs> you got a website, have you? <laughs> 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 www. <laughs> Oh, fuck, it's crashed. Thanks to you, lot, with your fucking internet, we live in a pervert's paradise, don't we, pal? Have you got kids, Mark? Yeah, in your inbox, eh? One phone call, mate, you're on a register. Now, <laughs> just your wife set with you, sir? A girlfriend. A girlfriend, fantastic. What's your name, darling? Kerry. Kerry, beautiful British name. <laughs> Comes from the ancient Norman name, meaning born on a council estate. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> I can hear that name now ringing out across a council estate between the blocks of flats next to a burning car. Hey! <laughs> Baby, come back! <laughs> Some people do anything to get a flat, won't they, love? Hey, welcome! <laughs> God bless you. Nice to have you here. Beautiful. What do you do for a living, by the way, sweetheart? Bearing in mind the correct answer for a woman is, of course, secretary or nurse. What is it that you do, darling? Can you tell me? Network manager. Network manager. A secretary. Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to me, lovely people. God bless you. Hey, you are beautiful people tonight, eh? Look at this string of beauties here. <laughs> fantastic. Look at that, there's three ladies. This is a bank holiday weekend. Look at it, fantastic. Hey, Saturday, Sunday and Monday on the end. Beautiful. <laughs> What's your name, darling? The first of the ladies. What's your name, sweets? Rebecca. Rebecca! Beautiful British name. Yeah, well, yeah meaning parents with ideas above their fucking station. <laughs> ah, tell me. What do you do, Becky? Tell me, what do you do for a living, darling? A student. <laughs> what are you studying? Nursing or secretarial skills? <laughs> History? <laughs> Total waste of time. <laughs> Is this your boyfriend or somebody you've been trying to shake off since Freshers Week? <laughs> oh. What's your name, pal? Ludwig. Ludwig? Beautiful British name. <laughs> Meaning two world wars and one world cup. Now, <laughs> welcome. What do you do for a living? Ludwig, tell me. Marine biologist. You're a marine biologist. God bless you. Hey, do they have a sea in Germany? Who's it? Submarines. Ah, I get the fucking message, pal. I know what's going on. And you've got to keep the U boat program going somehow. <laughs> hey, and you pretend you're looking for plankton, don't you? Hey? Achtung, I've got your fucking game, pal. Now, Nice to meet you, eh? How long have you been going out together, you two then? Eh? This is the test for huh? eight months. Eight months? Fantastic. How's it going, pal? Very well. Very well. How's it going, love? Okay. Okay. 
I'm here with a chance here. Now, who else? <laughs> it's been a year. What, in the middle, what's your name, darling? Saturday. What's your name, Switz? <laughs> hey? Kate. Kate! Beautiful British name. What do you do, darling? Um, I do costumes. You do you. costumes? Where are you from, my darling? Canada. Canada. Welcome. I love you, people. America light. <laughs> <laughs> You work for us. And finally, what? <laughs> and Monday here, what's your name, doll? Annie. Annie, oh, beautiful British name, meaning loose, of course. Ah, <laughs> <Right>, tell me, <laughs> Annie. <laughs> what do you do, darling? What do you do for a living? Same as her. Costumes as well. Yeah. Did you like dressing up as a child? Now and mm? again. Yeah. Now and again, <laughs> on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, sweetheart. You're a bit odd, though, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and the blokes find that scary, don't they? Yeah. Mm. That's why you've never managed to settle down, and it's sweets. <laughs> <laughs> it's tragic, isn't it, love? Hey, I've brought up your own personal pain. God bless you. <laughs> Fantastic. You are, you are beautiful. There's a geezer who thinks he's handsome, but he isn't. Let's just get out of the way. <laughs> he spent all that money on his hair and having him parting down the middle and <clears throat> in a second-hand shirt. Let's not fuck about here, pal. What's your, what's your name, mate? Keith. Keith, classic, beautiful British name, meaning dull but not in an aggressive manner. Now, tell me. <laughs> Little Keith, what do you do? A forklift driver. Forklift driver? God bless ya! Hey, that's a proper fucking job. Come here, pal. Hey, how about that? <laughs> it's industrial ballet, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> mm, yeah. It's, it's all in the wrist, isn't it? Yeah? You do realise, though, Keith. You could be replaced by a chimp at any minute, don't you? <laughs> there you go, pal. Tuck it. <laughs> Is this your girlfriend? Yeah, what's your name, love? Heidi. Heidi? <laughs> Heidi Ludwig, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for a living, sweetheart? I work in publishing. You work in publishing as a secretary or a nurse? <laughs> 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 The secretary, good girl. Exactly. Nurse is unlikely, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> how, long you, how long have you two been going out together then? Almost seven years. Seven years? But you're not married? Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's not really going anywhere, is it, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, pal, pass the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Let's spend your whole life dribbling. Now, what else? <laughs> What's your name, darling? Vera, beautiful British name, meaning born before 1948. <laughs> That's old school, isn't it? What do you do, darling? I'm a data policy analyst. Data policy analyst? <laughs> She's a secretary. <laughs> <laughs> With a calculator. Now, tell me. Is this your fella? Um, was. Was? What? Hey! What's your name, pal? Phil. Phil? What happened, Phil? Hey! Have you no shame? Hey! Pick yourself up, mate. Have some fucking pride. Tell her to piss off. <laughs> Ooh, you, you're playing an evil game, aren't you, love? Hey, stringing poor Phil along. What do you do, Phil? I'm a software developer. A software developer, then you deserve everything you fucking get, pal. <laughs> <laughs> We've got any Yanks present? <laughs> any Yanks? There's an American right down here. What's your name, Squaw? Mike, a beautiful British name, <laughs> meaning unwelcome cousin. Now, tell me. <laughs> I love you, Americans. God bless America, Mike. I say that, yeah? I say that. God bless America. Oh, I'm not ashamed of saying that. God bless America. 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 I'm not ashamed of saying that, Mike, because being British, I don't mean it, do I? Of course not. May I say? I'd like to thank the Americans and their help in the war against terror, because if you hadn't funded the IRA for 30 years, we wouldn't know how to deal with terrorists, would we? <laughs> now, <laughs> nice effort. <laughs> Good thinking on that one. You played the long game, I like it. Now, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> God bless you. Hey, what do you do for a living, Mike? A uh, student. You're a student? <laughs> <laughs> Coming over here reading our books. <laughs> no, I love you, Yanks. You speak your mind, don't you? Yeah? Even when there's nothing in there, you'll have a pun, won't you? Hey! God bless. Yeah. The home of the brave. Of course, it's easy to be brave with an invisible bomber no one can shoot down. Now, what is this? 
You're beautiful. The geezer with the torn jeans. A fucking scruffy little bastard. What's your name, pal? Dan! Beautiful British name. What'd you do, Dan? In the army, mate. You're in the army? God bless you, pal. Hey, that's fantastic. <laughs> what sort of soldier are you? Sapper. A sapper, you're an engineer, right? More on that later. Fantastic. Hey, <laughs> is this an ar army mate of yours, some bloke with another pal of yours from the army? God, what's your name, Squire? Craig. Craig, a beautiful British name. Comes, in fact, from the ancient Scottish name, meaning subject of the English. Now, <laughs> tell me. Because <laughs> I like you, fellas. God bless you. Hey, I'm, in fact, I'm all for national service. I am. Here I am, yeah? Especially now I'm too old to have to do it. <laughs> Sort you out, Phil. Hey, you wouldn't go back to her if you had a few hours in a fucking army, pal. Hey, doing as you're told. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, the, the, the sort of the cheery-faced man there. Look at him. Hey. Yeah, you look like, like the man in the moon in the black and white film. What's your name, pal? Yeah, what's your name? Ben. Ben, grow up. You're not nine. What's your... <laughs> What'd you do, Ben? A doctor. A doctor? God bless you. Hey, yeah, what's your favourite disease? <laughs> Syphilis. Syphilis? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Now, is that with you? Is that your son? Yeah. Yeah, look at the fear and loathing in your eyes. <laughs> what, what's your name, pal? I'm Guy. Guy? <laughs> what do you... <laughs> You're groovy. What do you do, Guy? A uh, student. A student? <laughs> Fantastic. What are you studying? Uh, I'm not. I'm sorry. You're not? Oh, exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> But I like you, mate. <laughs> were you against the war in Iraq? I expect you were. Yeah, of course no, you were. Not in my name. I expect you were. Yeah, as a student, you were. Well, listen, mate. Until you've actually paid towards those rockets, missiles and tanks, you're not entitled to the opinion who's who they get fired at. Do you understand me? <laughs> well, I actually think... I actually think... Anyone in the 40% tax bracket should be allowed to write personalised messages on the fucking thing. <laughs> You are beautiful, you are beautiful people. Oh, oh, oh. You are beautiful people. <laughs> I have to say, my eye is drawn to the chunky monkey in the fourth row. Look at this, look at this. God, look, God, what's your name, pal? Steve. Steve! Thank fuck for that, like a normal name. <laughs> Do you want some crisps? I don't want you passing out. <laughs> there you go, big fella. <laughs> what do you do between meals? For a living, for a living, for a living. For a living. For an architect. You work for an architect? What, what as a weight? <laughs> <laughs> you test the floors. <laughs> Another one held up. Well done. Nice work. Thanks for that, Steve. Same time next week. Now, the point is this. <laughs> I like you, mate. You're normal, aren't you? God bless you. You are beautiful. You are beautiful people, though. Hey, we've got a young dad down here and dressed in the cricket jersey. What's your name, Squire? Richard. Richard, yeah, posh. Yeah, what'd you do, Richard? Tell me. I'm a banker. You're a banker, yeah, exactly. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> Which bank? Bank of New York. The Bank of New York? I don't like you, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Working for the Yankee dollar. <laughs> Are these your mates? Is this like sort of. Just that one. Just that one. Just the, the fellow with long hair. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, pal? Andrew. Andrew, beautiful British name, comes from the ancient Celtic name, meaning slightly camp, doesn't it? <laughs> Andrew! <laughs> you called Andy, I wouldn't have given you a second fucking look, pal. <laughs> but you're Andrew! <laughs> yeah, who's the pilot, who's the navigator? That's the actual question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for a living, Andrew? I'm an actuary. You're an, act an actuary? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> What does your work actually involve? <laughs> work out when people are going to die. You work out when people are going to die? Fucking <laughs> 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 Our two mates from the Sappers could probably do that for you. <laughs> well, if he walks across there, he's fucked. <laughs> I like you fellas. Now, the lady here, what's your name, darling? Yeah, yeah, no, no, the lady here. Hey, yeah, yeah. Jane. Jane, beautiful British name. What'd you do, Jane? Tell me. I used to be a member of Parliament. You too. used to be a member of Parliament? <laughs> Until May this year. For whom? For which side? Labour. Labour? <laughs> no. I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what, Jane. I'll tell you what. That Tony Blair, he's got... I, I, I think he's, he's spot on. 
He's a top man. He's in fact, I would say, Jane, the finest Prime Minister this country's seen since Winston Churchill. I'll stick my neck out and say that. All right, he lost you your seat, but he's the finest... <laughs> Finest Prime Minister this country has seen since Winston Churchill, Jane. I will say that now. Because he's not afraid of doing his duty, is he? Absolutely. Absolutely. He's not afraid of sticking his neck out and doing the thing he has to do, regardless of how disagreeable or unpalatable that duty might be. <laughs> I mean, how many times has he got that woman pregnant? Oh, Christ! <laughs> oh. You couldn't, could you? Fucking hell! Hey! <laughs> Come at you with that clown's mouth. Oh my god! <laughs> Get away from me! I'd fake a heart condition, I don't know about you. <laughs> nah, the point... Not tonight, sweet. Nah, the point is. <laughs> but it's a brilliant time to be British. Yeah, yeah, we the British are the most sensible, normal, down to the fucking people in the world! <laughs> Without a doubt. And we are currently, I mean, I'm, we're, we're forward looking people. I mean, Jane, as a former MP, you're probably one of these people. One of these ladies, you don't mind my calling you that, do you? You don't find that patronising? One, one of these women, you don't find it patronising for calling you a woman, do you? One of these birds, you don't mind if I call you that, you don't find that patronising. Tart, you don't mind if I call you a tart. Yeah. <laughs> you're one of these modern ladies who thinks that men, yeah, men, mm, men, yeah, men, yeah, men. Yeah, man! Come on, the sappers. Man, let's hear it. Man! Come on, let's hear it. Man! Go fucking bad. Ludwig! Man! Die Männer! Die Männer! Die Männer! Man! Come on, let's hear it. Man, let's hear it, Ludwig. Man, that's it. Come on. Man! Man, Andy. Man. You. You definitely thought about it. I haven't, not once, never, never. Now, I was never confused. Now, the point is, you're probably one of these modern ladies who think the men, yeah, and women, 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 probably one of these modern ladies who think that men and women should be <laughs> Bollocks, I'll try again, I'll try again. <laughs> one of these modern ladies who think that men and women should be Help me out, you love Quo, that's it. Do you think that? Yeah. Yeah, well, you're wrong. <laughs> no, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. <laughs> the Honourable Lady is talking out of her hat, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Men and women can never be equal, Jane. And I'll tell you why. Because women are better than men in every way possible. Superior in every way imaginable. You can judge someone by their friends. That's a fair assumption, isn't it? Yeah? You can judge someone by their friends. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Perfection. Beautiful perfection. Man's best friend is a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Men are filth. We're scum. We're nut scratching, bogey eating, ass picking, farting filth. That's what we are. Those are the fucking facts, yeah? That's why she left you, Phil, because you are. <laughs> Nut scratching, bogey eating, arse scratching, farting filth. That's what you're about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, say it, say it. You're filth, Phil. That was the problem. Say it, Vera. Say it. You are filth. Say it. Phil, you're filth, Phil. Say it. Say it. You're filth. Yeah, you see? It's that simple. Women are amazing. I mean, women are amazing. Just look at what you can do with your bodies. You can create life within your womb. Within your womb. In your womb. You can create life in your womb. In your in your womb, and then nurture that life with your bazoom, with your bazoom, <laughs> your womb, and your bazoom, your bazoom, and your womb, your bazoom, 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 bazoom. Anyway, the point remains. All we can do with our kit is piss up a wall. You are incredible. You're angels. Angels. That's what you are. Angels, fear. Angels, child. Angels, angels Saturday, angels Sunday, angels Monday, angels Heidi, angels, you're angels, that's what you are, angels, <laughs> and whores, angels, you're angels, you're angels, women are better than men in every way imaginable, you are superior to us 
in every way possible. Everything you do, you are better at it than us. Women are better than men. That's why you can never be equal to us, because you are far superior to in every way. Because you are delicate, beautiful, fragile perfection. Yeah? And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. That's also why I think it's very important that you all stay indoors. <laughs> For your own protection. <laughs> While you're there, if you could hoover, that'd be terrific, wouldn't it? Hey. <laughs> Because you're better at that than us, aren't you? Now, put it this. <laughs> well, we the British are like sensible, normal, down to the fucking people in the world. Huh? Huh? I'm not saying we're better than the Yanks, all right? I'm not saying we're better than you, Mike. What I am saying is you're worse than us. It's basically... <laughs> no, mate. It's not personal. It's not personal, it's general, so it includes you. The point is... <laughs> the point is this. Huh? Yeah, I mean, we currently, the British, are World War champions of the world. Undisputed. <laughs> undisputed World War. Yeah. We haven't lost a war. We haven't lost a war for a thousand fucking years. That is a fact. <laughs> yeah, we even had a war against the French that lasted a hundred years, called the Hundred Years' War. And the reason it lasted a hundred years is because we're enjoying winning it so much, we spun it out for the full sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. If it's going well, you stay at the crease, don't you? Now, the point is... I mean, we had to help the Americans in the Iraq war, and there are people who say the Iraq war was unnecessary. I cannot agree. It was essential practice. In case one comes along, we've actually got to fight, haven't it? <laughs> <laughs> got to stay max fit in case the Germans try again. <laughs> <laughs> I've been too quiet for too long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're saying Iraq's turning into a new Vietnam. Oh, no, loads more fucking miserable films with Yanks in. <laughs> now, the point is... No, we had to help you. We had to help the Americans, because yeah? they've never won one on their own before, have they? And they, they, <laughs> they came to the experts, undefeated World War champions of the world, because the British Army, the, yeah, the British Army works on a simple system, didn't it? Yeah? The American Army, yeah, a dog's breakfast with all due respect, because yeah? the battle plan for Iraq was a disaster, wasn't it? Because what did they do? And we all knew it was a rubbish battle plan. You knew, didn't Heidi? You knew, didn't you, love? And it doesn't concern you, sweetheart. <laughs> Everyone knew. <laughs> The boys knew the Yanks were going to fuck it up, didn't you, fellas? You knew, didn't you? You knew. Yeah, Ludwig. Yeah, you knew with your own detailed understanding of military campaigns. We all knew. <laughs> Phil knew. Yeah, as Vera slammed the phone down on him and yet again, he knew. You boys, you knew, didn't you? Yeah? Yeah, the American battle plan. You knew, didn't you, Andrew? Your head full of uniforms. Oh, those poor boys. <laughs> we all knew. We all knew. Because what did the Americans do? Basic, bottom line, battlefield error. They sent Marines, 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 water soldiers, <laughs> and they sent them to fight in the fucking desert. <laughs> How was that ever going to work? Baghdad's a five hour driver. Best if you ignore the speed cameras. <laughs> Three weeks in a speedboat. Come on, fellas. <laughs> Get on bus, boys, come on! Fuck it, let's pedal. I don't know what I've been told. Nonsense. <laughs> so what did we do? We're in the desert, we did the obvious thing. We sent the desert rats. Because the clue is in the fucking name. <laughs> Phone rings, we're in the desert. Well, we'll send the desert rats then. It's obvious, George, that was just stupid. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, all right, okay, I'll tell them to paint the van yellow. <laughs> Oh, get away from me. Now, the point <laughs> is... Yeah, because that's how the British Army works, isn't it, fellas? On a simple job name description allocation system basis. Because <laughs> we are the most sensible, normal, down-to-earth people in the world, yeah? The British Army works on a job name description allocation system basis. Very simple, yeah? You've got the desert rats for fighting in the desert. It's obvious, isn't it, yeah? You've got the parachute regiment for parachuting. It's obvious, isn't it, yeah? You've got the Royal Engineers for going behind enemy lines and putting out cones, haven't you, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> Slow the traffic down to 20 for no fucking reason whatsoever. <laughs> Stand in a luminous top and do nothing, disrupting the enemy's infrastructure. Fucking brilliant work, fellas. <laughs> We've got the Scots Guards keeping an eye on the Scots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got the Irish Guards keeping an eye on the Irish. Not so busy anymore. And of course, <laughs> now we're all friends. And of course, the Welsh Guards for simply keeping an eye on the Welsh. Mind you, there's nothing to guard in Wales since they dug out all the coal. They should have. <laughs> should have paced themselves, really. Now, the point is. 
We've got the horse guards for guarding the horses, haven't we? Yeah? Horse artillery for firing horses at the enemy. <laughs> Freaking them out. Achtung! Horse! <laughs> and of course, the light infantry for fighting during the day. It's a simple system. <laughs> Special forces soldiers who can't read. A simple system. <laughs> Laid out plain and simple so the Queen, who's a woman, can understand how her army works. You can't argue that. Because I think we, the British, are the most sensible, normal, down-to-earth people in the world, and... <laughs> Big Steve. <laughs> Here, when you're eating a pie... <laughs> do you like to know what the filling is, or do you like to gamble? Do you like to not know? <laughs> you eat it whole? <laughs> I like you, mate. God bless you. Slow metabolism, yeah? Slow metabolism, extremely fast pie arm. <laughs> <laughs> big bones. Now, the point is this. And <laughs> great big fucking chunks of flesh on them. Now, the point is this. The point is this. Who are we? And that's a good question, isn't it? Right now, it's been asked a lot at the moment. Who are the British? It's vague, isn't it? Who the British is, is vague. It's very, very vague. And that, of course, is how we got our name, isn't it? The Brit-ish. <laughs> This is completely fucking ish, isn't it? That's what all the other countries American, French, German, Russian, British. Ish. Totally ish. And we're made up of ish people. The English are completely fucking ish. Yeah? The Scottish are extremely ish. The Irish are so ish, they're not sure which ish they really are. And of course, <laughs> the Welsh. <laughs> Listen about them, the better for any <laughs> Queen's simple cousin. That's what they're like. Family. <laughs> Family secret. Now, the point is this. <laughs> Keep them out of sight, out of harm's way. Now, the point is... <laughs> what it boils down to... Yeah, it's, it's vague, isn't it? I mean, have we got jo any jocks present? Hey. hey! Fantastic. What's your name, pal? Paul. Paul! Beautiful British name. Where are you from, mate? Stalling. Stalling! Beautiful British name. Fantastic. Named after a pound coin. Now, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, Paul? I'm a teacher. A teacher. What do you teach? Science. Science? Nay. You just got some mad for science, aren't you? Nay. Yeah, I like you people. You beautiful fucking people. You beat your face, boy. Yeah, I love all that. It's fucking good. Now, <laughs> now, the thing about the Scots is you're ish, aren't they? There's lots of different types of Scots, isn't there, Paul? Yeah? You're ish. You're, Scot you're all Scots, but you're Scottish, aren't you? Yeah? You can't judge people by how they look nowadays, can you? But you can judge people by how they sound. Right, and as far as I can tell, there's four, at least four different types of jock. Scots, all displaying different levels of jockery and different kinds of... <laughs> different degrees of jocklitude. Now, now... Well, there's four I can think of. The first that springs to mind immediately is the Scotsman who sounds like a cow with a cough. In there, yeah? Bah! Ooh! English! Bastard! English! Fucking bastard! English! English! You English bastard, bastard Englishman, English bastard. <laughs> Type one. <laughs> <laughs> Type two is your little yappy terrier. You English bastard, you English bastard, bastard Englishman. You English bastard, bastard English. Oh, you fucking English bastard! It's all your fault, you English bastard. <laughs> then you have the Scotsman who sounds like he's having his genitals rubbed with a warm, wet chamois leather. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you English bastard, eh? <laughs> oh, well, oh, you English... Oh, you English bastard, eh? Oh, it's all your fault, eh? Oh, you English... Oh, lower, you English bastard, eh? Oh, higher, oh, nearly there, you English bastard, you <laughs> bastard English... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and then there's the Scotsman who sounds like an opening door. All Scots, all Scottish. That's how it works, isn't it, Paul? Then, of course, the English, we're ish. For instance, Geordies are English. Yes, I know. I've got all fucking surreal, but they are. They're English. What? <laughs> yeah, we've got any Geordies present? I love them. They're beautiful people, a genetically engineered race of orc like people whose <laughs> sole purpose is to keep the Scots out of England. It's a brilliant. 
They've done a marvellous job for centuries. They've kept that city in such a ruinous, parlous state. The Scotsman arrives in his train, in his car, and on the back of his pony or whatever, and <laughs> large dog arrives in Newcastle, takes one look at the place, thinks it's England, and fucks off back home again. It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> But I love the Geordies, they're amazing people. And there's nothing better if you get the chance to go to Newcastle, sit yourself down on a Friday or Saturday evening, and listen, sit down in the square with a can of special brew so the others don't feel... <laughs> you're somehow taking the piss. You sit down <laughs> and listen to the haunting, beautiful sound of the Geordie whale song. <laughs> oh, we, oh. <laughs> They got that bone in their head for a reason. <laughs> and then, of course, they're Scousers. Now, in the Second World War, as everyone knows, or the Second World War, as they're allowed to call it, as everyone knows, Scousers performed the essential war work, or war work, as they were allowed to call it, the essential war work, top secret at the time, of jamming German radios. Everyone knows this. It's a fact, isn't it? <laughs> We're friends with them now, of course. <laughs> Germans, that is, not the Scousers. I mean, fuck it out. How many hubcaps does one man actually need? That's the question. <laughs> I think, though, lately, we, the British, and my sensible, normal, down to earth fucking people, oh, have lost the plot. Haven't we? Lately, we've got a bit, we've got a bit stupid on ourselves. Yeah? Can't tell right from wrong no more. Yeah? It's tragic. Yeah, you're at war, good case in point. Along comes a chance for us to do in an evil fascist dictatorship, nowhere near here, at very low cost to ourselves, and some oil into the bargain. Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> but what happens? Oh no, not in my name. Oh no, someone will get hurt. Fucking tragic. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not for one second suggesting we should have a go at China. Whew, Christ. Hey, whew, be reasonable. Fuck hell. Hey, there's not enough bullets for a start, is there? <laughs> The only way to get enough bullets would be to have them made in China, wouldn't it? <laughs> and they might smell a rat, mightn't they? Hey! Hello? Yeah, uh, more bullets, please, Mr. Ping. <laughs> Ten billion, I reckon. <laughs> Your fucking business, mate. <laughs> and I want to give that feeling back to you, ladies and gentlemen, that lately we've lost. How it felt to be British in the old days. Yeah, back when Ben was a lad. <laughs> around about 1938. <laughs> and I want to give that feeling back to you because you deserve it. Because you're beautiful people. You come out a hot Sunday night. Huh? Yeah. You're doing your bit. You're having a beer. Yeah. You listen to a few words of wisdom. And I think, I think I want to give that feeling back to you because you deserve it. Because you are beautiful people. Yeah? And this, my friends, this, this is how it used to feel to be British in the old days. We were gods! Yeah, yeah. And we were popular when it was our turn as well, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> we went round building schools, mate, not blowing them up. Yeah, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah. Do you want a piece of this feeling, do you? Yeah! yeah. Do you? Yeah. To me. Yeah. Nicely done. Thank you, Fred. Here we go.
Pass it around. Look out here it comes. In coming. Keep it moving around. Pass it around. That's it. Pass it around. Pass that way. To the to the back. Fucking hell, I feel like Sven. To the back. <laughs> That's it, mate. Nicely done with the header. Beautiful. Keep it moving. That's it. Yes, watch out, darling. There's a giant ball bouncing around. <laughs> Keep it moving. Yeah, watch out. Look out. Girls, to me. To me. To me. To me. Yeah, beautiful. And again. Here we go. Pass it around. That's it. Pass it around. Yeah, enjoy the feeling. This is how it felt to be British. Yeah, don't give the yank a touch. Don't give the yank a touch. Don't give the yank a touch. Beautiful. And that, my friends, that, that is how it used to feel to be British. <laughs> We were gods! And there she is at the top in the middle of the map. <laughs> Great Britain. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. She's beautiful, isn't she? Eh? The only actually sexually attractive country on the map. Eh? Here, yeah, Ludwig, one look at her. Hey, eh? she's beautiful, isn't she, mate? Eh? Mm, I can see why you lot wanted her so much. Now, the point is. <laughs> And Great Britain is, of course, the centre of the earth. That's a scientific fact <laughs> that cannot be argued with. Straight through Great Britain runs the north line of longitude. Great Britain is scientifically, technically, provably the centre of the earth. Yeah? Yeah? Because of the north line of longitude. All right. We put the line there, but it still stands. Now. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, it means that we, the British, us in here, we're in charge of what time is all over the world. <laughs> It's fucking beautiful, isn't it? It means the Germans don't sit down for their lunch until we say it's one o'clock. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we wrote a book, we did, and we wrote it in English, the finest language in the world, in fact, the finest language in the universe, a language even spoken in space, as any fan of Star Trek will tell you. A language... <laughs> a language even Americans can handle with some degree of skill, though they're... <laughs> Your boss needs a few lessons, mate. Now, you look at it. <laughs> Axel of Elvis, what's he on about? You look at this. <laughs> Which is beautiful. I mean, I mean, we invented work. We, the British, invented work. That is a fact. Yeah, we've done everything. We invented work. We had a revolution, industrial revolution, invented work. The French didn't. They had a French revolution when they invented being French. <laughs> As a result, a lot of dead French people. <laughs> Progress. The Russians. <laughs> Ask any historian. The Russians, they had a similar revolution outcome. You know, we didn't bother with that. You know, we had the Industrial Revolution where we invented work. At the end of it, everyone had shoes, a knife and a fork, and a giant fucking metal ship each. You can't argue with that. <laughs> That's why we, the British, are currently entitled to have our feet up and have whatever we want made by a Malaysian four year old for a pound. <laughs> <laughs> you and I earned that. We should make the most of it. Now. Yeah, and it's a broad church, Great Britain. We've got the Scots, we've got the Jocks, of course, and I love you, Jocks, you're beautiful people. Yeah, yeah, I love you, you're beautiful. And it's, you, Jocks, you like to say, don't you, Paul? You like to say, ah, the Battle of Bannockburn. Nay, nay, the Battle of Bannockburn. Nay, when the field ran red with English blood, when Robert the Bruce tore the English indeed, away, and he would never forget. Fair play. Got to give it to you on that one. You want it third square. But... You say Bannockburn, I say Culloden, because it's not the heat that count, is it, mate? It's the final. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I remember, you, you lot have never actually been in the final, have you? Now, look at this, and, look at this, and. Our Celtic brethren, the Welsh, and I love the Welsh, they're beautiful people, aren't they? God bless the Welsh, eh? And what's interesting about the Welsh is it said they have an accent. I don't think they do. I think they have an attitude, with all due respect. <laughs> Every time a Welsh bloke opens his mouth, he sounds as though he's dying of some inner fucking hurt and torment that he hasn't figured out yet. <laughs> Whatever it is, even on his wedding day, the happiest day of his life, he sounds pissed off, doesn't he? This is the happiest day of my life! I cannot wait to spend the rest of my life with you, the most beautiful woman I have ever seen! In Cardiff! <laughs> Why won't it stop raining now, next door? There's our cheeky sidekick, Ireland, of course. <laughs> I mean, look at it, we're like a motorbike and sidecar. <laughs> They'd be going nowhere without us. <laughs> oh, they've changed the name, painted a different colour, but we're the ones with a fucking engine. You look at it. And I. Oi! No! 
I'll be the first to admit it's been a bumpy ride with the Irish. It's not always gone according to plan. And even when it has gone according to plan, they haven't liked that either, have they? Leading to long, expensive judicial inquiries. But it's all... There's a lot went wrong. I mean, that potato famine was a terrible fucking business. But you can get crisps for love nor money in this country. <laughs> That's when we first turned to peanuts in my business. Now... <laughs> got to keep the punters thirsty somehow. <laughs> But I love the Irish and I have infinite respect for them, up to a point, because over many years, over many years they've done much for us, haven't they? And they, they, they dug our roads and now they sing for our amusement. It's fantastic. <laughs> 20 years ago, Westlife would have been digging the M25. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> oi, believe, oi, can fly. Yeah, all right, is it level? Get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> they've done well for a bunch of tone-deaf, spud-faced chances. <laughs> Next, of course, we have the neighbour from hell, France! <laughs> I don't know why we don't just grow a great big hedge up the English Channel. <laughs> Spoil their light, eh? <laughs> big noisy party in Kent, chuck some dog shit over the fence, eh? <laughs> Set fire to a few tyres, eh? <laughs> That'll be the way to go. France, or the France, as it prefers to call itself. The France. La France, the France, in case we should confuse it with some other France. <laughs> with this France, or that France, or courageous, reliable, turning up in times of battle France, or... <laughs> <laughs> you work your way down, there's the unsolved Rubik's Cube of Europe there. Spain and Portugal, as you can see. Can't get them last two bricks. Now... <laughs> who has been to Spain? Show of hands, please. Everybody, basically. Reason for this, Battle Armada, 1588, we defeated the Spanish. As a result, they signed a humiliating treaty allowing our boys and girls to go and fight on their beaches. Of course, we, we, we've got to stay match fit somehow. Now, this had the added bonus, if the Spanish try anything, we're poised, ready to invade the following morning once our heads have cleared and we've stopped copulating like eels. I'll tell you what, what goes on in Spain is filthy, isn't it, Annie? It's filthy, isn't it, love? Filthy, isn't it? Filthy. Say it, love. Filthy. Yeah, of course, filthy like that. Filthy. 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 Fantastic. My little Canadian friend, you say filthy now as well. Go on, say filthy. Filthy. Yeah, how about you two look at each other and say filthy? Come on, girls. Come on. Come on, you might enjoy it, you never know. It could be the beginning of something very interesting. Come on. <laughs> Do it! <laughs> Come on. Oh, right. oh, that was fantastic, wasn't it? Whew. That's every man's dream, isn't it? The chance to disappoint two women at once. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, love, I'm puffed out from the first one. Ah. Look at this. And the whole thing with Spain, right, this is a great place to go on holiday because it's extremely hot, right? Yeah, in fact, it's so hot you can't think, innit? You get off the plane, you can't even fucking think your way down the end of the stairs. You have a couple of beers, you wipe your own memory. It's the perfect place to go and get away from everything because you can't think, you can't remember anything. Fucking brilliant. Yeah? Now, that's fine for us. Going there for two weeks, a week, weekend, whatever. Yeah, for the British to get away from it all, go to a country where it's too hot to think. But for the people actually living there, it's caused all sorts of problems. <laughs> Yeah, the Spanish, I mean, they have that lie down in the afternoon to try and clear their heads and make some decisions in the evening. But <laughs> it's played havoc with their decision making process, isn't it? For many centuries, they were convinced the earth was flat. I mean, for Christ's sake. It's not even level, is it? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, mountains are the clue, aren't they? Fucking hell. Hey, look around you, Carlos. I mean, they had to be. They had to be proved wrong by an Italian. That's how low they'd sunk. Then there's a. That whole business of fighting animals, bullfighting. Now, I have no row with a cow. I want no battle with cattle. It's not personal, is it, the whole thing with a cow? We look rear a cow and look after it for a couple of years and it turns itself into the abattoir. But it's not personal, is it? Right? It's, not, it's a business arrangement. It's not personal. I wouldn't punch a cow in the face. It would be a humiliating thing to do to it on its way to its death. I wouldn't do that. Right? It would be unfair on the cow. It just so happens I'm hungry. He's made a beef. It's not personal, is it? <laughs> Obviously, I'll punch a squirrel if I can get close enough. <laughs> Fuck you, you little bastard. Fuck off. Stop leaving nuts in the sand pit in the beer garden. But... 
If I did punch a squirrel, I'd be doing it for myself. Well, out of curiosity or revenge. I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't be doing it for the amusement of strangers in an arena. I wouldn't put on tights. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't stick pins in a squirrel first to enrage him. <laughs> I wouldn't wave a cape the colour squirrels don't like. Just, just probably a grey green like a rotten nut. I don't fucking know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Normal. Uh, Ludwig, what's your animal size punching limit cut off? What's the biggest animal you'd punch, Ludwig? <laughs> a dog. Yeah, but there's all sorts of. What are you talking a Great Dane or a Terrier? What are we talking? Great Dane. You punch a Great Dane. <laughs> so that's you and the, that's the Germans all over it, the Danish. You're not happy with them, each other, are you? <laughs> Now, the point is, the point is this, right, I mean, if you chucked a donkey off a church tower in Great Britain, <laughs> yes, exactly, right, if you chucked a donkey off a church tower in Great Britain, right, yeah, you'd be on a register about 15 minutes fat, wouldn't you? Big angry crowd of fat women in shell suits protesting at your doorstep, <laughs> having brought their kids along without the faintest idea what's going on. <laughs> That's because this country is normal. Now. <laughs> Work your way along, there's Italy, and I'd like to point out right now that this is this is fact. There's no opinion in what's to follow. The basic thing with Italy, right, is they've got no follow through, have they? You don't see stuff through. So it's logical. 43, they folded early. <laughs> <laughs> Venice, they still haven't called a plumber. It's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> it's under them stairs. Yeah, do it fucking do up the stopcock, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah, in any other country, a flooded city that stank of shit would be regarded as a disaster, wouldn't it? <laughs> Not some sort of romantic jewel in a crown. <laughs> I mean, a pizza. What is a pizza? I tell you, it's a pasty that some arsehole hasn't shut yet, innit? <laughs> shut the pasty, Giuseppe! <laughs> Volcanoes, because I ain't finished. Up here, we have Germany. Now, I respect the Germans, I do. Yeah, because they tried twice, didn't they? <laughs> Two cracks of the world tight, you'll have to respect that. <laughs> Swiss, there's of course the plucky Swiss, Switzerland there. I mean, God bless the Swiss. I mean, look at the situation those people have got themselves into. Hey, look at it, hey? French to the right of them, yeah? Austrians to the left of them, Germans up above, Italians down below. Hey, you'd never sell that flat, would you? <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be able to shift it, no matter how tidy it was, how much chocolate you left lying around. This <laughs> Austria, which is made of pastry, that's why it shrunk. You work your way down, you've got Yugoslavia. Now, basically, Basically, I'll explain it for the MP. Basically, <laughs> basically, Jane, the people who live in Yugoslavia don't really get on. That's all you need to know. Now, <laughs> and a while ago, we, the British, bombed it, yeah? Because it's very complicated. We bombed it to make it simpler for them. But, um, <laughs> can't argue about who lives where when there's no houses left, can you? Hey. <laughs> no pleasing some people. Down here, Albania, where the Albinos live, you've got, uh, Greece, where they invented the Olympics. Turkey, where they invented Christmas. I know which one I prefer. It comes around every year. It's <laughs> Bulgaria, Romania, Moldavia, the Womble countries. It's, uh... <laughs> Ukraine, the only country you can get the word urine out of in one go. There's Poland, where everyone's a trained plumber. Lithuania, where they're all electricians. Estonia, where they're all uh, plasterers. And Latvia, where everyone's a carpenter. Coming over here, doing the jobs we're not prepared to do, because we've all got worthless degrees in media status. There's, um... <laughs> I mean, look at, look at the size, when you look at the world from this angle, though, look at the size of Russia. Look at the size, of, just look at the size of Russia. Annie, hop up, measure Russia, love. Come on, put a finger either end of Russia, sweetheart. That's it, good girl. Your dreams are going to come true for you. That's it. Could they, yeah, did yeah, you see, did you see exactly? Hold the fingers up, show everyone exactly how big, how big, how big. Yes, you, you're getting the message yet, sweetheart. <laughs> There's a fine line between banter and harassment, isn't there? <laughs> Fucking European court. Now, what is this? I mean, Russia's gigantic. As it goes all the way around to America. Yeah. Then you've got the international date line that we set up a while back, so middle-aged men from Birmingham can meet and marry ladies from the Philippines. Then we have <laughs> the Pacific Rim, Andrew. Yeah, I got your number, pal. <laughs> Japan, of course, Korea, well, well, of course, the Korean War, that was a terrible business. Basically, we found out they were eating dogs and sent in the RSPCA rifles as quickly as we could. There's some... 
China, where they put a man into space very recently. Mind you, they didn't use a rocket, they just stood on each other's shoulders and passed him up. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. <laughs> Hence the leotard shortage two years ago. There's, um... <laughs> Mongolia, of course, we're not allowed to call it that anymore, eh? Fucking social workers. There's some... Um, <laughs> same goes for the Black Sea. There's Kazakhstan, of course, where the Kazakhs live, Uzbekistan, where the Uzbekis live, Turkmenistan, where the Turkmenis live, Tajikistan, where the Tajikis live, and Kazakhstan, where they take the fucking piss, to be honest. <laughs> and it goes all the way around to Europe, yeah? Russia's gigantic, a massive country, endless mineral resources, and a population used to doing exactly as they're told for tuppence. And it's still crap, they can't turn it around. And I think the simple reason for this is they need, and the only way they're going to fix it, they need to get in a proper working alphabet with actual letters that people can read. <laughs> it's <a> nonsense. <laughs> Dingbats, what are they thinking? Down here, of course, Africa. Now, as a man of science, yeah, like Ben here, the doctor, would tell us that all human life originally evolved in Africa. Would you say that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I can't agree with you, mate. I was in Devon three weeks ago. <laughs> Let me tell you this, natural selection's got some power lifting to do in Plymouth. <laughs> no thumbs, tails, it's an outrage. <laughs> Cornwall is actually Celtic for cousin's wedding. And we have... <laughs> the Middle East. <laughs> Careful! <laughs> in fact, the Middle East is extremely complicated. In fact, it's so complicated that me explaining it here tonight could possibly make it worse. <laughs> We'll have a punt, why not? Fuck it. The point is... <laughs> I mean, basically, it's basically all you really need to know, Jane, is the people who live there don't really get on, right? And, and for my money, they should all pull their heads in. Right? Pull their heads in, fellas. Calm down! Yeah, that's my advice. I mean, the Israelis. I don't like the people at the end of my road, but I haven't bought a tank. Hey! <laughs> of course, once you've bought a tank, you've got to use it, anyway. That's where all the problems arise. And a while ago, we, the British, very helpfully stepped in to try and sort out the Middle East once and for all. We did. We did. We made an effort, yeah, on our way through to India to get a cuppa. And we... <laughs> we sat them all down, back of an envelope, red pen and a ruler, and we drew them some nice new straight borders, yeah, around the naturally occurring oil that we had found that they weren't looking for. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we set them up with kings and queens in Arab countries with beautiful Arab names like Syria and Iraq and Jordan and Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I mean, we could have just called them Shell, S-O, B-P. <laughs> Texaco, Wild Bean Cafe, but no! <laughs> Iraq, it's ours now. There's Iran, who's next. There's Afghanistan, work in progress. There's uh, <laughs> Pakistan, who need to get their house in order. And then, of course, India, or 118 India, as I prefer to call it. <laughs> Basically, the Geordies asked for too much money. <laughs> what they were. Well, they were going to spend a pound a week, and I can't imagine. Here we have... But India is a land of ancient, mysterious, mystic, ancient mystery, an ancient, mysterious, mystic land locked within an ancient, mysterious, mystic tradition of ancient, mysterious, mystic mystery, wrapped within the mysteries of ancient mysticism. <laughs> with four billion people that we used to run with two blokes and a bike. And how, <laughs> how we got away with that, I can't imagine. That's the actual mystery. Here, you work your way around, there's the dangling genitals of Southeast Asia, as you can see. You can see that there. And if you can see that. Dangling. You know, just fantastic. There's uh, Vietnam, the left bollock. Cambodia, the right bollock. <laughs> Malaysia, the bell end. Singapore, the Japs eye. There's uh, <laughs> Christmas Island, where it is Christmas every day. Someone should tell Wizard and they can fucking knock it off. There's uh, <laughs> Indonesia. Papa's got a brand new Guinea. There's Australia. <laughs> or Wilkinson land, as I prefer to call it. Here we have New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, New Zealand. Yeah, of course. Land of ancient hobbits and orcs. Hey, yeah, yeah, you like the hobbits, don't you, Andrew? They're about the right height, aren't they, pal? You have definitely thought about it. It's all you can think about. You're, you are obsessed, mate. That's all you can think about all the time. You can't get out of your head. Now, up here, of course, we have uh, Hawaii, where Pearl Harbor is, as everyone knows. As everyone knows, where the Americans were taken completely by surprise two years into a global war. <laughs> You're amateurs, mate. Now, nah. <laughs> Trop Tropic of Cancer, they should change that. It's tasteless. Um, it's <laughs> that setting for the relatives. There's Easter Island, of course, where the there's lots of chocolate. The Galapagos, where we invented evolution. Down here. <laughs> the South Pole. Now, 
Everyone knows that the British were actually second to the South Pole. That's a fact. I'm not afraid of admitting that. But because we got there second, we were able to verify that the other bloke got there first. Which means, strictly speaking, we're the umpire on that one. Therefore, it's our game, our rules, we win. Can't argue that. <laughs> Can't argue that. Falkland Islands, 1982, no help from no one else, eh? Fantastic. And that wasn't a war for oil either, that was a war for penguins, which of course are an essential ingredient in making Guinness. You boil them up, the white stuff floats to the top. There's <laughs> uh, treacherous Argentina, Chile, which is stringy. Up here we have Peru. Has anyone here been to Peru? Anyone at all? Yeah, a few, a couple of people been to Peru. Yeah, the lady there, what's your name, love? Laura. Laura, posh. Now, you went, what was Peru like, love? Beautiful. Well, I tell you what, I'm never going there, sweetheart. And I urge none of you to go there, and I urge none of you to have anything to do with Peru, right? Because that country might be beautiful, love, but it's bang out of order. I'm no bleeding heart, you've detected that by now, but the way they treat their bears is a fucking outrage. <laughs> <laughs> the way they take a bear when he's not even fully grown, they give him a suitcase and a <laughs> scruffy old hat and a scruffy old coat. They give him his travel documents and note, please look after this bear, not even so what his fucking name is. <laughs> Send him off on his way, eh? It's an outrage. <laughs> Coming over here eating our marmalade sandwiches. <laughs> <There's that. laughs> There's Colombia where excitement's from. There's uh, <laughs> Venezuela, capital city, Caracas. Grow up. Yeah. <laughs> Panama, one canal. I'm not impressed. We've got thousands, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> and ours will lead to Great Britain, don't they? Not the arse end of fucking nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> There's the cricketing area, not what it was. There's um, Mexico, capital city, Mexico City. Make an effort! <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the United States of America, which is basically the best way of looking at it, really, is that it's a good idea that's got out of hand. <laughs> I mean, they've lost the plot, these people. Look, you can't call a town Tampa, it's going to confuse the ladies. <laughs> I mean, they got off to a good start. New England, you can see what they're trying to do there. I mean, you've got, <laughs> you've got Norfolk, Durham, Richmond, Birmingham, Newark, Hartford, <laughs> Manchester. Yeah, they're starting to run out of sensible names, aren't they? Like <laughs> Bang up, Welsh name alert, they're in the shit. I mean, then they go mad. <laughs> Chattanooga, Tennessee, Albuquerque. It's not, we're not, we're not playing fucking Scrabble, fellas. <laughs> Up here, of course, is Canada. Now, these people in this part of Canada are absolutely... Com <laughs> this is priceless. <laughs> these, these people in this part of Canada are absolutely convinced <laughs> that they're French. <laughs> That's not the case. They're just living somewhere shit and it's a reflex action. <laughs> it's, uh, Baffin Island without a baffin on it, Greenland, which is white, Iceland, which is a volcano, the Faroe Islands, nowhere near Egypt. I'm not responsible for the names. <laughs> and back here, back here, of course, is Great Britain, because that's one of the most beautiful things about the world being round the way the British God made it for us. <laughs> <laughs> because God is British, that's why we don't have earthquakes in this country. Because <laughs> you don't shit on your own doorstep. <laughs> the most beautiful thing about the world being round is whichever way you go, you'll always end up back here in Great Britain. Here in Her Majesty's London, on a Sunday night, drinking the Bloomsbury Theatre with people like you. Yeah? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and we were gods once, we held that thing in the palm of our hand, but no, no, not anymore. No one believes in anything anymore, in fact, do they? Yeah? Yeah, Phil, what do you believe in? Second chances, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ben, what do you believe in? Um, okay. <laughs> um, evidence. Evidence? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Tricky wanker. <laughs> yeah, Guy, what do you believe in? Nothing, mate. Nothing, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, you know, daddy. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I like you, mate. You're a chancer. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's difficult, to, it's difficult to know what to believe. Ludwig, what do you believe in? Luck. Luck. 
All right. Well, the problem is, is I think people don't believe in stuff anymore. That, that is a, I think that's a fact. Right? Yeah? And I think we, the British, lately, could, we could do something to believe in, couldn't we, Lange, man? Yeah? We could do something to put fire in our heart. Yeah? <laughs> Passion in our belly, steel in our backbone, vision in our vision. Because yeah? I was in New Zealand lately and I went to watch the rugby and basically what we did was gave them a lesson on what not to do. I thought it was very, <laughs> very instructive for the All Blacks to be shown how not to play rugby by the Lions. And we did them a favour there. The point is, what you've got to understand is those Kiwis, they have that little hacker, don't they? Their little dance and all that. And it really fires them up. We could do with one of those, couldn't we, Lane Jimmy, in this day and age? Yeah? And I think there is one that we could use. And it, I think what we need to do is go back and look at the ancient British myths and legends of these fair isles. Yeah? Because every culture has ancient myths and legends, doesn't it? The Greeks, they have a legend about a bloke called Oedipus who killed his dad and fucked his mother. Now, <laughs> that's disgusting, isn't it? I, I mean, if you'd done that, you wouldn't tell anyone, would you? <laughs> Let alone hope they were still talking about it in 4,000 years' time. I mean, ugh, that's what... You, you, you did what, Oedipus? You filthy fucking bastard. Here, yeah, do you know what Oedipus did? Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. And we have many ancient myths and legends in our culture, ancient Anglo-Saxon and Celtic myths that we've forgotten, that we've lost sight of over the years. <laughs> ancient British myths and legends, which, if they've survived at all, have survived as mere nursery rhymes, as mere sing-along, sing-song songs for kids to sing along to at sing-along, sing-song songs. <laughs> Trifles. Nothings. But there is one ancient British myth, myth and legend that I turn to in times of crisis. Yeah. Yeah. When I need passion in my belly, fire in my heart, steel in my backbone. And it's a story of someone who had a dream, someone who went for that dream, someone who got knocked back but didn't let that deter him, someone who dug in deep, waited for his moment, fucking triumphed. It's a story of someone with guts, grit, determination, courage, inner vision, self-discipline, personal strength. Someone who wasn't going to let life knock him back. Someone who was going to bide his time. Someone who wasn't going to get deterred by the fucking rubbish we encounter in this world. Someone who's going to pursue his dream, see it through and triumph. It's the story of the Churchill spirit, the bulldog breed. Ancient British values that we need to turn to in times of crisis. And it is, of course, the ancient British myth and legend of the insuency spider. <laughs> Yeah. Because what did the Incy Wincy Spider do, eh? He had a dream, didn't he? He had a dream to climb up the water spout. <laughs> so what did he do? He climbed up the water spout, didn't he? He didn't spend three years at university thinking about it, did he? <laughs> Pissing my money out the wall. No! He got on with it. He climbed up the water spout. But then what happened? Well, life, didn't it? Down came the rain, washed the spider out. <laughs> but did he let that deter him? No! Did he let that set him back? No! He waited, his, waited for his moment, yeah, bowed his time. Up come the sun, dry a pull of rain, <laughs> and the insy witchy spider <laughs> climbed up the spout again. <laughs> it's a fucking hero. And let me tell you this, there's no doubt in my mind that he was British. Did you say that? <laughs> no doubt whatsoever. Oh yeah, no doubt. He wasn't his American counterpart, the itsy bitsy spider. No, because he wasn't hoping to fall off and claim the compensation. No. <laughs> Nor was he French, Nancy Wancy Agne, <laughs> who bowled it the moment the going got tough. Nor was he German, the Insen Vincent Spinner, <laughs> who made two bodged attempts and then gave up completely and fell back on selling expensive cars. Nor <laughs> was he Italian and thought the flooding and smell of shit was a romantic success. No, indeed. <laughs> No, was he Spanish, il aji, aji, aranya, who attempted to punch a passing mouse whilst wearing a cape. <laughs> For the amusement of a woman with a moustache. No, he didn't, he was none of those people. He was British. And let me tell you, in this soft-handed day and age, he wasn't doing it. He wasn't doing it because he had a single to promote. He wasn't doing it in hope that the audience wouldn't vote him off. He wasn't doing it. He wasn't doing it to get in 3 a.m. in the Daily Mirror. He wasn't doing it because his spin doctor had fucking told him to do it. He wasn't doing it. Yeah. He wasn't doing it for any other reason other than he was doing it for himself, for his family, for Mandy the Queen, <laughs> for his country. As an example to each and every one of you here tonight. And I think if you were to all join me now in singing this beautiful 
ancient British folk song. <laughs> then we, the decent, reasonable, sensible, normal, hard-working, law-abiding, tax-paying, reasonable, normal, tax-paying, law-abiding, reasonable, sensible, law-abiding people in this country who don't want to pay their speeding fines, <laughs> regardless of how fast we may have been going the wrong way up a slip road, yeah, on the phone, no tax, no MOT, no seatbelt, eating a hamburger whilst receiving oral sex. Haven't you... <laughs> Haven't you got anything better to do, officer? I think... <laughs> I think it's time for us to join together and sing this beautiful ancient British folk song and then maybe you and me can get this country, Great Britain, to go up the spout again. <laughs> I'm sure that's what you all want. <laughs> so, here we go. I'm sure many of you remember the ancient ceremonial hand gestures. <laughs> that our forefathers used and our forefathers' forefathers in times of ancient worship. <laughs> As we, the silent majority, now sing together hymn number one <laughs> from the hymn book of the church of the Incy Wincy Spider. <laughs> the Incy Wincy Spider. <laughs> sing this, go out onto the streets of London <laughs> and we can turn this country round together. <laughs> Here we go. All together, or not at all. One, <laughs> two, three. Incy wincy spider climbed out the water spout. You got it. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Come on, up came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the incy wincy spider climbed up the spout again, again. Incy wincy spider climbed up the water spout. You got it. Down came the rain. Thank you very much. My work is done here. You've been a pleasure to drink with. Please take your glasses. Get to the bar, guys. Yes, thank you.